All right, let's set, try some adding and subtracting rational expressions. Now, you've already done the multiplying and dividing. That's actually a little bit easier than the adding and subtracting. Um, we'll start, we'll do two kinds of examples. One where they already have a common denominator, because remember to add and subtract fractions, you have to have a common denominator. And then we'll try one that they don't have a common denominator. So if you look at this first example, see how they both have an x plus 7 for their common denominator? Okay, that works out great. Then you can just add the numerators together, and you leave the denominators the same. It would be something like if you were going to take 4 sevenths plus 1 seventh. That would equal 5 sevenths. See how I add my numerators, but I leave my denominator the same. But I had to have the common denominator for that to happen. I've got it. So here's what I'm going to do. The one thing you have to be careful of on a problem like this is if this is a minus sign. That implies that you are subtracting all of this. So I'm kind of a fan of changing that to a plus the opposite. So I'll change that to plus, and I'll go in here and change all those signs. That way I'm sure to keep that minus sign on every single thing. All right, so then what I end up with is an x plus 7 for a common denominator over 2x plus 3 minus 4x minus 5. And then I combine my like terms on the top. The denominator stays the same. I have a 2x with a negative 4x. That'll get me negative 2x. I have a 3 and a minus 5. That's a minus 2. Okay, typically what you'll try to do is see if something reduces, but remember what we learned that as soon as you throw addition or subtraction in there, that's a whole group, so I can't piece it apart really, only if I'm multiplying by something. The one thing that I could maybe do on this is if you look at the numerator, I could pull out a, a common factor. I would pull a negative 2 out of that. If I factored out a negative 2, I'd have a positive x and then a positive 1. And my goal would be to maybe get lucky enough that this quantity matches this quantity, and then I could cross them off. I didn't get that lucky, so I'm done. So either one of these answers, since it didn't help me to factor out the negative 2, this would have worked fine as an answer as well. However, if you didn't factor it out and it did happen to reduce, then it's going to be wrong because you haven't reduced it all the way. So it's worth looking at to see if it'll help you. Okay, let's try another one. So let's try one that does not have a common denominator. So let's start with numbers. Just refresh your memory. If you have two fractions you're trying to add and they don't have a common denominator, you have to find something that both of these denominators go into. So in this case, 9 and 5 both go into 45. So I'm going to try to make them both be 45. That means taking this times 9, but I have to do it on the top also and taking this times 5, but I have to do it on the top also. So I turn that into a 20 45ths plus 27 45ths. Now I have the common denominator, so I add my numerators together and I get 47 45ths. And I'm done because that doesn't reduce. Okay, so let's try it over here with these um, rational expressions that have variables. Okay, so remember, this x minus 5 is its own thing. This is its kind of own thing. This is its own thing. Nothing I can do with my x minus 5. I look here, maybe a GCF, but no, 19's prime, so nothing's going to come out of that. This one's a quadratic, kind of thinking I could factor that. So what I'm going to do is factor it. What I'm hoping to have happen is to get something that maybe matches this one over here. And I am lucky enough to get that. It's going to be a 5 and a 3. Signs are the same. I'm going to have minus and a minus. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is to get a common denominator. And it's kind of weird with um, quantities with variables instead of just numbers. But basically, just like over here, 5 times 9 would get me a 45, and I went with 45. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say x minus 3 times x minus 5 is going to be my common denominator. So I have that. I'm missing on this one. It needs an x minus 3 so that it'll match this one. So I'm going to take it times an x minus 3. 
then it'll have the same denominator, but I got to do it on the top also. Remember, you're multiplying those. Okay, so then what I'm going to end up with, with that common denominator, I'll have this x minus 3 and this x minus 5. And on top, I'm going to distribute that 2. So I'm going to have a 2x minus 6. Plus, this side I'm not going to do anything with. It already has that common denominator. And I have a 3x minus 19. Once you have the common denominator, you merge it together, write the common denominator, and then see what you can do with your numerator. All right, on this one, I don't have to worry about the minus sign. It's a plus sign, so I'm just adding all of this. So I've got a 2x and a 3x, so that's going to get me a 5x. I'm going to have a negative 6 and a negative 19. That's a negative 25. And then, like last time, you want to check to see if it'll factor. Hey, you know what? This one does factor. I could pull a 5 out of this. So if I pull the 5 out, I'll have an x minus 5. On the bottom, I have my x minus 3 and my x minus 5. And remember what my goal was, what I was hoping to have happen by pulling this 5 out, was maybe this would match, and it does. So I actually get to reduce this one. So I get to cross those x minus 5's out. And so my final answer, let's go this way, I'm out of room. So I have a 5 over an x minus 3 as my final answer. Okay, I hope this helps. Good luck.